Hello everyone, this is Phil White with you again. I am a graduate assistant in Library and Information Studies here at UNCG. This is the second video in our GIS in Google Fusion Tables demo that you're working your way through. Uh, what we're looking at now is your GIS activities folder that you've created uh, on your local machine that you're going to be working out of. Uh, you've got your three different data sets in here, your KML that you got from the uh, Tiger shape files and then converted. You've got your library data set, I've named mine Guilford Libraries because I'm using Guilford County. Uh, the Guilford Libraries data set has uh, all that latitude and longitude information for all the uh, branch libraries within your county. And I've got my mean income tracks data that we pulled from the American Fact Finder. Uh, you'll notice I'm working on a Mac today. And uh, one of the cool things about Google Fusion Tables and using Google Maps in general as a tool is that it's all web-based. You don't have to have any special programs that uh, you don't have to use a certain operating system. You can just do it from a Mac or a PC or even a Linux machine if you want. Everything will work just fine. Now, uh, we've got everything in our folder. Uh, you'll also notice I've, I've gotten rid of all those zip folders and unzip folders and all the extra data that we don't really need. Uh, feel free to do that as well, or you can keep it uh, if you need to go back and and uh, re-edit any of your data, but just for simplicity's sake, I've gotten rid of mine. Um, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is create uh, your first Google Fusion table and make a map out of it. And it's really easy to do um, when your uh, this dialog window opens up, click on the Choose File button. You're going to choose this from your folder, your GIS activity folder. First one we're going to do is uh, just our libraries within your county. Mine's Guilford Lives here. I'm going to open that up and click Next to begin the import. And there it is. Um, click Next again and Finish. And you'll see that your entire spreadsheet has been imported into a Google Fusion table, including your latitude and longitude data that you had to edit. And Google has actually uh, created a map for us. You'll see that here in the, in the map tab, and it's made it based on uh, the latitude and longitude data. It's used all that data to geocode the locations of each of the library in your data file and it opens them up here in a Google map for you and uh, you'll see I've got all of the Greensboro Public Libraries around Greensboro and I've also added in the High Point Public Library down there in High Point because it's in Guilford County as well and the um, cool thing about this map is that it's interactive and it's, it's great for displaying on the web. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, um, you can zoom in and see you know what road you're libraries on uh, like this one here and you can even click on these little uh, point marks and uh, pulls up a little call out box with some information about about your library and in fact it has all the columns uh, of data displayed in this call out box that were in your spreadsheet and you can actually edit this window and, and uh, tailor it specifically to what you want displayed on your map and let me show you how to do that real quick. Just go to the Tools menu, click on that, and now click on the Change Info Window Layout option. And you can turn certain columns of data on or off. And uh, I'm going to get rid of a few of these. Let's see, I do want the library name and address in there. And I think I'll add the phone number. So save that. Now when you click on your library point, it will pull it up and it's a lot tidier looking. 
Um, you'll see you're looking at the Blanche Benjamin Branch Library on Benjamin Parkway. And I've got the phone number in there, and uh, if you really want to be snappy, you could add a whole other data column uh, full of the web addresses for each of uh, your libraries in your county, and uh, add that to this as well. So, we've done that, and for now, that's all we're going to do with our uh, library point data. And this has already been saved in your Google Drive, so go ahead and close out of this tab. And you'll see there it is in your Google Drive, and we're going to create uh, another Google Fusion table. And this time, we're going to bring in our uh, census data. Um, mine was mean income uh, per household uh, within my census tract. And I'm going to click on that and open it up. Just like before, you're going to click the next key. Click next again and finish. Okay, now it's brought in uh, this uh, data sheet, and you'll see you're looking at mean income dollars per household within uh, for each of your census tracts. Um, should look just like your um, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet did. And you'll notice here that there's not a map uh, associated with this data table. And that's because this census data, even though it's broken up by census tract, it doesn't actually have any uh, geographic data associated with it. It's not been geographically referenced. And um, you'll also notice that this geography column here, that uh, we took a few minutes to edit uh, during the data acquisition phase of this assignment. And you'll recall that you had to delete some extra data from, from, these, from this column. Uh, you got rid of the, the uh, uh, I think it was the counties, names, and everything using the find and replace function in Excel, and you renamed it geography. Now, let me tell you why you did that. Um, in the data file that is associated with your KML that we're going to import here in just a minute, there's an identical column in, in, its, in its data table uh, with the same census tract information and it's displayed just like this one is. And what we're going to do here is merge your um, demographic data that we're looking at now with your KML file uh, using the um, this column that they that they share uh, as the key that will um, bring them together. And if that doesn't make sense now, uh, hopefully it will be a little bit clearer when we get around to actually doing it here in just a second. So now that you've brought this one in, we're going to save it as it is and um, exit out of this, and I'll show you how to uh, merge these two data sets. So close out of this one and we're going to create another Google Fusion table. So create and Fusion table. Choose file. This time we're going to bring in the KML file and click open. Then click next. The KML file is a really uh, it's a really big data set so it may take a uh, a little bit longer to load depending on uh, speed of your internet connection. So if it takes a little bit longer, don't worry, just hold on to it. And there it is. Go ahead and click Next and Finish. Okay, so we're looking at the data table that's associated with your KML file. 
and it has been mapped by Google and let me show you that first okay what we're looking at right now is Guilford County and all of these uh, spaces here that are uh, delineated are the census tracts. That's what the shapefile does. It, it contains uh, the boundary shapes of all of the um, bits of data uh, for your census tracts. You'll notice on mine, uh, yours, yours may not do this, but you see I have kind of an empty space here. And um, don't worry about that at all. Uh, that's just the airport and uh, this is not actually a census tract because no one lives there so don't worry about that if you're doing if you're doing um, Guilford County or another county and uh, you see something like that zoom in and check it out um, could be an airport or some other public space uh, where no one lives um, and uh, don't worry about it one bit um, now we've got our Guilford County uh, census tracts displayed. Let me show you the data one more time. Now take a look here at the this name uh, LSAD10 column. Um, I don't know what the name uh, of that, I don't know what this header name actually stands for, but um, you'll see that the census tract and uh, number is the same and it's formatted just like it is in your demographic uh, data, mean income uh, data file. This is the column that we're going to use to link our two. And you don't have to do this, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to change the name of this column to geography. So it will be exactly the same as uh, the, the column in your mean income file. You don't have to do that. Uh, I just think it makes things a little bit easier. So now we're going to merge these two together. Go back to your Map of Geometry tab and click on File and move your mouse down to Merge and click on Merge. Now you're going to select the um, Mean Income Tracked file and click next and now you can choose which columns you want to match uh, so you can join these data sets together in GIS terms uh, this operation is called a spatial join because you're joining data that is not spatially referenced with data that is spatially referenced and uh, henceforth giving it a geographic reference so we're going to hit click on the description button and click on geography and you'll see the geography column there and you're going to do the same in uh, for your other data set and click on geography just the same and now you're going to click the next button and you'll join your data sets together uh, this this uh, window is just asking you which ones you want to include go ahead and include all of them because we, we don't want to leave anything out that we might need so this one just click merge and now click view table now we're back on our our data file and if you scroll all the way to the right you'll see that uh, all the the data columns from your mean income data table have been added and if you click on your map of geometry we can start doing some cool stuff so now we're looking at uh, the same map Greensboro uh, and Guilford County except we can do some cool things now um, and change the way it looks based on our new data so click on the tools tab and now click change map styles and what we want to do now is click on the fill color uh, tab and you're going to display your uh, mean income demographic data um, as a gradient and it will create a nice colorful map that uh, shows you which 
which um, census tracts are wealthier than others. So click on the gradient button and now click uh, the show gradient button and you can choose which column you want to display. So we're going to display the mean income estimate for all households. And make sure you press use this range. And this range is the range of mean incomes for all the census tracts. So 16,988 is my poorest census tract and 221,000 is my wealthiest census tract. So click use this range and now click save. And look at that, we have all of our data displayed in what's called a choropleth map. And you can zoom into this, and just like before, you can click on it and, and get a little bit more data. Um, and you can see, you know, you can look around at it and, and see some interesting patterns. You know, we have some wealthy areas over here, and kind of the eastern side of Greensboro is a little bit uh, poorer than other parts. Um, just like before, when you click on one of these uh, census tracts, you'll get a call-out window. And it has a whole bunch of information on it. And just like before, I'm going to remove a little bit of it. Let's take a look. Um, I think I'm just going to include geography because that's the name of the census tract. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. I do want to include mean income within that census tract and let's include all the households. This is just a total number of households in that census tract. Click save. Now when we click on one, let's click on the most wealthy one. You'll see that census tract 104.04 .04 contains 1,043 households with a mean income of $221,728. So you have a map that has information displayed on it and that is what we were going for. So that's pretty much it for uh, part two of your demo. Uh, we've made a few fusion tables. We've done uh, a merge of two different fusion tables so that we can create a map that uh, um, is really functional and displays some interesting data. You could do this with other data as well, like population density or uh, poverty levels or uh, some ethnicity and um, reach some pretty interesting um, data. So that's about it for now. And in our next video, I'll show you how to combine some of our maps and display them on the web. So thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you again shortly.